there are two things that every kid wants. Every kid wants to belong, specifically every kid wants to belong to his family. And the other thing every kid wants is fairness. Now, what's behind fairness is knowing the rules. So if the kid knows the rules and the rules don't change, then he or she can figure out what is fair in life. And if you've ever been around four or five or six or seven year olds or eight year olds or nine year olds or 48 year olds or 58 year olds, you'll know that fairness is a very key thing to a lot of people. Now, one of the things that has things feel fair to kids is a level of certainty, right? To be certain that the rules are not gonna change. And if you grew up with dysfunctional parents or you know someone who grew up with dysfunctional parents, you know that when those parents changed the rules, which was creating uncertainty, that created a lot of damage to that person because uncertainty is very difficult for the human brain. In fact, the human brain hates uncertainty. And the part of the brain that hates uncertainty is the thing called your amygdala in your brain. So there's a lot of uncertainty going on in the stock market now, and I hope to show you something that may not bring less or more uncertainty, but it's gonna give you an insight to what may be happening. It may give you a pause. It may help you to be a little bit more level-headed about what's going on. And if it does just a little bit more, then I did my job for my weekend podcast to you. Hey everybody, this is RC Peck, and this is my weekend podcast. And the theme for this weekend's podcast is still breathing. This is a canary in a cage with a gas mask on in a coal mine. Kind of funny because Miners, before they had the newer technology of sensors, used to bring down canaries in small cages, and a canary would die of carbon monoxide poisoning before humans would. So if the canary died, the uh, miners had time to exit, and they would be saved. So the question is, what is the canary for the stock market? What is the indicator or the asset or the stock or the, the ratio that can help us understand is the carbon monoxide building up? Is it time to um, you know, protect ourselves? And I wanna show you what one of those are. So one of, one of the best canaries for the stock market is the junk bond market. And if you look at the screen here, this is about a five year chart of the price of junk bonds. When the price falls on the screen here, yields go up. So that's the black line, the price of junk bonds. Now this is actually uh, the ticker symbol JNK, which is an exchange traded fund. And the red line on the screen is the 200 week moving average. Now I wanna point out two things on this chart and only two things. The first thing I wanna point out is junk bonds peaked in 2013 and then tried to break above it in 2014 and didn't and had a double top. Since that double top happened, since July of last year, let's call it 14 months, the price of junk bonds has been falling. If you're long time bullish on the stock market, you do not want to see a divergence or a, a bearish divergence with junk bonds and uh, the S&P 500. So the price has been falling. It broke below its 2014 low. It had a little kind of hanging out here. OK, and it broke below that. So it has been falling for 14 months. Again, that's not good if you're bullish on the stock market. The second thing I want to point out is it is right here at this five week, meaning this is a weekly chart, but at this five year resistance looking at this weekly chart, it bottomed junk, the price of junk bottom bunk. I have to think clearlier, clearly more clear here. The price of junk bonds bottomed here in October of 2011. And here we are in October of 2015 and the price is at the same place. Now, if you're bullish, you want to see this price move off this and move up. You want to see it bounce up, move up, because that will be bullish. Now, of course, if it breaks down, that's going to be very negative for the market because this is the canary in the coal mine. This is telling us how people are acting, kind of the riskier people in the market. And if they're taking risk off the table and wanting to act less risky, then that's kind of telling us something about the internals of the stock market. And right now, the junk bond market is saying the stock market is unhealthy. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this 
price chart and I did. Now this is a different looking price chart and this is only 15 months. So it's not five years of data, it's 15 months of data. And instead of a red 200 period moving average, this is a blue one. And this is a 200 day moving average. And you can see it's been sloping down since June, but it just, it's kind of this cosine. It goes up, it goes down. It's, it's pretty much flat. The one thing I want to point out to you on this, this price chart of junk bonds is junk bonds broke below its August low. Again, not a good sign if you want stocks to go up or be or to get stabilized. And it broke down below its December low, which was also its 2014 low. So here we are right here. Junk bonds have to stay. The price of junk bonds has to stabilize right here uh, in order to really help the market to stabilize and not break below. So one of the things you're going to want to look at, too, is the price of oil because the collapse, I think you can call it a collapse from $110 to as low as, was it 40? Did it touch 40? But even let's say if it's at 50 today, a 50% drop in the most traded commodity on this planet is going to hurt a lot of energy companies. And a lot of those energy companies borrowed money from people at a junk level. So they borrowed about 500, uh, um, half, a, half a trillion or $500 billion. Not all that was junk debt, but certainly a strong percentage of it was. So watching what oil does can have a big impact. Um, though there was some restructuring in the debt market for the energy companies. So they pushed off, or as people, pundits like to say, they kicked the can down the road. But still, junk bonds are falling and that is not a good sign. Lastly, I want to leave you with this price chart. This is a price chart of the S&P 500. We have its bottom support here, which is its August low and its October low of last year. As long as the market stays above that, that's good. Really what happens in here, that's kind of eliminating the noise. You don't really need to know much what happens in here. Only if it breaks above this line and stays above this line because this is the ceiling right now. This is the resistance. When the price comes up here, all these buyers flood in and say, just get me my money. Just get me my money back. And then the price comes back down. So all the movement in here is noise right now. Until it breaks above this line or breaks below this line, there's really not a lot to pay attention to. Now, of course, you're gonna to want to have a strategy that protects your money from your lesser self and protects your money from catastrophic losses and protects your money from pretty big collapses like the one in 08 and 2000 and 87 and in 1973 uh, and so on. Uh, on the training that I just put out, the diversification myth training, I go back all the way to 1929 and show you 85 years of crashes and what the one thing that was uh, connecting all of them. So what's the takeaway? I always wanna make sure there's a takeaway. The takeaway is, guys, this is noise right now. I know it's exciting when the market slams higher, goes up one, two, three percent, four percent in a day or in an hour, but let me just tell you, historically, you do not wanna see days where the market is screaming higher, two, three, four, five, six, seven percent. Those days all happen in downward trending markets, in volatile, unstable markets. When we're in a stable uptrend, a good day is like 1%, 0.8%. You have a kind of a boring, stable uptrend. You don't want the exciting movements in a day. That happens when the market is not quite sure which direction to move, and that's where we are right now. Hey guys, this is just another step in helping you protect your portfolio and protect your future. Until next time, this is RC Peck. Hey guys, thanks so much for being in my life. Uh, I just put a great new training together. Some have said it's probably the best training that I've ever done. I've been at this business for 18 years studying stock market strategies and stock market crashes. Um, and so having uh, non-family members <laughs> tell me that it's one of my best trainings ever means a lot. I have a link to it in my PS on the email called the, diverse, the Diversification Myth Training. It's There's parts of you that know it's worth your time, so you may wanna check that out, if not immediately. Thanks so much for being in my world, and I will speak with you soon.